What it do, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Axis of Combat podcast, episode 61. We're here to break down UFC Denver, top to bottom, the entire card. We're going to give you some picks, some predictions, maybe even some bets. As always, one of your co-hosts, Ray, Ray Boogie, Ray Yo from the AO, and of course, my brother. Who were the boss? Who got next? You already know. And before we get into any of that hoopla, you already know the routine. Like, comment, subscribe, follow Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. To kick off the card at Bantamweight, we have Montel Jackson, Quick Jackson, going one-on-one with Damon the Monster Blackshear. Jackson, 13 and 2, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 32 years old. Blackshear, fighting out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, 14, 6 and 1 overall, 29 years old. Uh, this fight and the next fight recently just got put on this card as of today. Uh, me and my brother will give you a quick general analysis. We want to give you completely hanging here, but, uh, I'll throw it to my brother first to see what he thinks about this particular fight. Well, for one, great matchmaking. Um, let's start there. It's, it's, this is a phenomenal fight, to be frank. With that said, I'm going to lean to Mom Blackshear for the reasons I'm going to list right now. <laughs> <laughs> Montel Jackson hits very hard, has huge hands, has huge power. Low volume, though. Um, that's probably his biggest, I guess, his biggest gripe in the UFC. He's actually kind of lost some fights or almost lost some fights rather because he's so low volume. But when he thumps, he thumps. Now he's going against someone at the Mon Blackshear. High volume, underrated striking. I think the better grappler, just as big and does cage push to win minutes. Um, arguably beat Mario Batista. Well, not even to say arguably, very close it was fight. competitive, yeah. And he took that fight on short notice on a quick turnaround where he had to cut weight twice. And he is a very large man for the division. Gun to the head, I'm going to lean the Mon Blackshear. Um, we haven't done too much tape study in this, as my brother said, because these fights kind of just got announced. I think Damon has more avenues to win this fight. And I think Montel, Montel doesn't really do himself favors with low volume, even though he hits extremely hard. So Damon Blackshear is my lean. Next fight on the card at flyweight, we have Joshua Van, the fearless Joshua Van, going one-on-one with Energy, Charles Johnson. Van, 10-1. Fighting out of uh, Houston, Texas. I'm not sure what his country is, though, but I'm not going to pronounce that. <laughs> I don't want to disrespect. Who? Uh, 22 years old. Energy, Charles Johnson, 15 and 6. Fighting out of St. Louis, Missouri, 33 years old. Uh, this is another fight that, again, just got recently announced. Just got, when I refreshed Tapology, it wasn't here the other day. It's here now. I'm, I'm going to lean. I'm going to lean Joshua Van. I know. He might struggle with Charles Johnson's wrestling here, but I'm gonna I, I'm gonna lean Van only because I think in the stand up, I mean he's I think he's gonna light him up. He might lose the first round because he kinda he tends to give away the first round, but Charles Johnson also really doesn't go after the first round either. So the first round is probably gonna be pretty pedestrian for the most part. If Charles doesn't get his wrestling going, I think easy night for Van. What about you? What do you what do you think about this fight? Yeah, I'm with you on this. And and I think Charles doesn't really go after the wrestling as much as I'd like him to. I can't recall a fight where, and forgive me because this fight just got announced, I can't recall a fight where he's really pushed the wrestling pace unless he's getting wrestled into. Then he doesn't really always make the best decisions on wrestling scrambles either. So I'm on Van because I think Van is the goods. I think his striking's really good. I think his durability is really good. Um, his wrestling actually looked somewhat decent in his last contest where he kind of started learning how to wrestle against a guy who had some decent wrestling. So I think Charles is another level, but I also don't think Charles necessarily has the punching power to threaten Van on the feet. This, I think this is a tough fight for Charles. You know, I really do. I think th- the line is plus 160 for Charles minus 190 for Josh Van, but I think that sounds relatively right. I know people are going to say he has a he has an avenue, but I can't I really can't I have a pretty good memory. I really can't recall a fight where Charles has pushed the wrestling. I, I really cannot unless they're wrestling into him and he has to create scrambles to get up. Josh is not going to wrestle him. I like Josh. I like Josh by decision here as well. 
Next fight on the card at middleweight, we have Josh Fremd going one-on-one with Andre Petrowski. Fremd, 11-5 overall, fighting out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 30 years old. Petrowski, 10-3 overall, fighting out of Springfield Township, Pennsylvania, 33 years old. First of all, I didn't realize both these guys are from Pennsylvania. Second of all, this fight sucks. I'm not too high on either one of these guys. Josh Frem, ass. I've never been a fan. And Petrowski, what a disappointment, this guy. I mean. He got he got knocked out by, what's this guy's hip? Balkoon's hip. Balkoon's hip. <laughs> He's built like a Greek guy, got knocked out by a hip on a, on a wrestling shot that he attempted. I, I don't. Uh, that, that turns me off hard, man. This I, fight's a big stay away. I got bad vibes from both guys. Josh Fremd, I mean, if he doesn't get his wrestling going, I think he's going to lose this fight. I'm going to lean Petrowski here, not with the most confidence, because Petrowski... Habitual line stepper. I mean, <laughs> he's knocking himself out, bro. I mean, I, I can't trust a man that claps himself. It's insane. Petrowski has the defensive wrestling to hold Fremd off. The jiu-jitsu as well. He has the jiu-jitsu. And the power. Edge. He has the power. Fremd... Like I said, doesn't get the wrestling going. I think it's going to be a long night for him. So just give me Petrowski here. No confidence. What about you? I'm with you for all the reasons you listed, but my money is not. I, I don't think my money is touching this fight unless I could find like a violence angle, to be frank. So you thought I was going to bet on this fight? Stupid. I'm not going to let you get the chance. Nope. <laughs> nope. This fight's a big fucking stay away for a lot of reasons. Uh, this, these guys are just habitual line steppers, both of them. Josh Frem's ass and Petrosky has a case for being even more ass. So pass to be frank, but Petrosky has the lead. Next fight on the card at women's flyweight. We have Viviana Aruja going one-on-one with Jasmine Jazdavicius. Mm. Aruja, 12 and six overall fighting out of Brazil, 37 years old. Jasmine Jazdavicius, 10 and three overall fighting out of Canada, 35 years old. This is the first of three women's fights on this card. And I don't know if it's a hot take or not, but this is probably going to be the best of the three women's fights on this card. I'm surprised it's so low. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's we're doing this early in the week, so it might, it might adjust. It might adjust because I don't think Blackshear is kicking off the card. But no, I'm going to lean Jazz Davicius with medium confidence. The, she has the length. She has the reach. She's going to have the striking output. Both these girls kind of do the same thing, in my opinion. Yeah. They like to walk forward. They're going to strike with you, but their real objective is to get to the ground. Correct. I think out of Rujau, a little bit on the older side, she has fought the better brand of competition. She's beat. She's beaten, and she's lost to the better brand of competition, in my opinion. Punch for punch, I also think she might hit harder. Correct. Jasmine is... Probably big for this weight class. Yeah, she's pretty big. She's a big girl. Good uh, chin. A good chin. Not the great. If you ask me which chin I trust more, maybe out of Rujal's chin. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I mean, the thing is, like, you might have seen her get knocked down more, but it's because she's fighting better people. <laughs> you know, the only common opponent they both have is Natalia Silva. And Natalia let them both up. And Natalia... Literally did the same exact thing to both of them. Natalia is a future world champion, though. Lateral movement, quicker hands, kind of just beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Didn't let, and she did not let either of them establish any kind of grappling or wrestling. The, if the line gets a little crazy on the Rouge outside, if it starts to widen just a bit, I'm I, I might consider a, a dog play, but. Pure pick, Jasmine. What about you? I'm right on your side with this, and I'm right on your side because I think Jasmine is going to be the bigger bully in here. Um, I think she's going to be able to put pressure. I think I trust her gas tank a little bit more than um, Adarujas as well. I, yeah, she's going to yeah, be a good point. She's going to be bigger. I think she has the better wrestling. I like Jasmine via decision here, but if this line does get disrespectful enough, it. it it's definitely a dog shot for sure. So we'll see how the line shakes out later in the week, but. For now, I think the obvious play is definitely Jazz by decision. But if Adarujo gets like past 150, for sure, for sure, because this fight should be, it might be close. So Jazz, but not the highest fight IQ. So we'll see what happens. Next fight on the card, also at women's flyweight, we have Luana Santos going one on one with the Demon Slayer. How do you say her first name? Maria. It's Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Agapova. Uh, it's, it's not Agapova. It's uh, Agapova. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Bars. 
Santos, 7-1 fighting out of Brazil, 24 years old. Agapova, 10-4 overall fighting out of Kazakhstan, 27 years old. Now, I mentioned that there were three women's fights on this card. This might be the worst, for good reason. Uh, the Luana Santos side, I'll start with her. Good jujitsu, decent entries in terms of, because she wants to get the fight to the ground. Her stand-up is okay. Got some pop on it, though. Uh, her real main move is the the head and arm thing into, the, arm. into, the, into the scarf hold. Correct. She loves that shit. And then from there, she'll, you know, get whatever submission she likes to, you know, work from that side. On the Agapova side, decent Muay Thai. Solid striker, not the best footwork, can be taken down. I think her takedown defense is probably a little better than people give it credit for. I agree. That being said, if you wear on her, she will gas, then you can take her down and pretty much do what you want. All her losses are pretty much been by submission in the UFC. I'm going to lean as a pick, Santos, because if she does what she needs to do, she can win this fight. I don't like Santos. I think she might be a little bit of a hype job. Just being completely honest, I don't like her striking. I think she's a little bit lackadaisical in the ring. I don't know. I feel like she don't got that dog. Like she's in there and she wants to fight, but I I feel like she she does it in such like a careless way. And I think careless is probably the wrong word, but like I don't know. There's no like real oomph in her game. I like uh, uh, Agapova like a lot because she she shows up to fight. She'll throw down. She hits hard, and when she connects, she's opportunistic with the finishes. Correct. But if she hasn't sure, I mean, they're both young. If she hasn't really shored up the game enough, or at least worked on the footwork enough where she can keep Luana Santos at bay, that that kind of worries me. Santos has got a direct path here. She probably shouldn't be as big as a favorite as she is. Hell no. This line should definitely be a little closer. And I mean, if Agapova gets like some stupid, crazy number. From a betting perspective, I might take another dog shot here, but this this fight is super low level. I might I might just stay away from it in general. Give me Santos here. What about you? I love uh, uh, Akaba. Akaba. I don't want to... Pr- Maria. I like Maria here. <laughs> I'm going to stay right there with this shit. Akapova. Akapova. I like Akapova a lot in this fight. Oh, no, just- no, I'm sorry. I messed it up. Agapova. 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 I like Agapova a lot in this fight just because of the line. She's a plus 230 right now. <laughs> Take my take my fucking money. Um, I, I'll be honest. I think I'm gonna put it this fight because I think this line is ridiculous. I think it widens. It, to it, be honest, I hope I hope it does. Please, yeah. please, because at, at 250, I think it's definitely. I Lu- put I put, a, I put definitely like maybe half a unit on it. Lu- Lu- Luana, not the best offensive wrestler. Her jiu-jitsu is kind of one dimensional. If we're being frank, not sure she's gonna be able to put push a crazy crazy pace either for three rounds. Akapova, the the way Akapova, the way clean a striker by far hits very hard very big for the weight class um i'll take a dog shot here because i don't think luana is going to be able to do anything to her on the feet uh she might crack her but to be frank she's not the most technical person and akapova does have a decent chin so unless you're getting this girl to the floor and subbing her which that's the only way you're really going to beat her in my opinion you stand up with her for 15 minutes she's going to light you on fire so i like akapova here at plus 230 i'm gonna let that line open up a little bit more throughout the week and um I'll even play the submission if it looks crazy because she is a very opportunistic submission artist from the hand, front headlock position. I like I like fight ends and sub. And if you like the Luana side, if she gets her down, she's probably going to get the sub. sub. So yeah. those those are two props I kind of got circled as well. Yeah, and if not, Maria by decision. Um, that's another play too. So I, 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 love, I love Maria's line in this fight. So that's where I'm at. Next fight on the card at men's lightweight, we got Drew Dober going one-on-one with... Not Mike Davis, but a very quick turnaround for Jean Lord Assassin Silva. Dober, 27 and 13, fighting out of Denver. Hometown boy, yeah, 35 years old. Lord Assassin, Jean Silva, 13 and 2, fighting out of San Paulo, Brazil, 27 years old. Uh, banger of a fight. This was supposed to be Mike Davis. Mike Davis ends up pulling his, uh, no, tearing his bicep. I think that's yeah. what it was. Joan Silva, I mean, if you follow the podcast, literally, I bet against him not too long ago. It was like a week ago, two weeks ago. I don't remember when the like, fights were. But I thought, listen, Charles Jodain, like I said, had the more technical striking. He was quicker. Got caught. He just, 
he, dude, his first ever knockout loss to Jean Silva. Like, that power's got to be stupid. Like I said, he used to be a former fat boy. Mm-hmm. So that power got to carry. Now he's moving up in weight here. Super last minute. He didn't really take any damage in that Jordan fight. Fighting Drew Dober, the crimson chin himself. <laughs> but the chin might be not as crimson as he used to be, if I'm being completely honest, you know? I know he got kind of cleaned out a bit by uh, the steamroller for Vola. I think this is a good fight. I think this is going to be a back and forth fight where none of these guys are probably going to want to grapple at all. So give me Lord Assassin. <laughs> give me Lord Assassin because I think I'm tired of betting against this man, Loki. I think he might knock Dober out. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's a crazy thing to say because Dober's only really been knocked out once in the UFC. And I don't think outside of that, really, he might have suffered another loss, but no. super early, maybe. But again, I mean, does, does Dober get to the grappling here? Maybe he can. He showed in his last fight against Roy- Moicano that he that it's, it's possible. But then, you know, he also got tired of grappling and Moicano ended up just falling on top of him in the third round doing his thing. But Give me Lord Assassin, man. Give me Lord Assassin by KO and in a great fight that law that as long as it goes, is gonna be amazing. What about you? Yeah, this this fight's a definition of dogger pass. Um yeah. John John Silva being the dog, to oh, be frank. He's, is he? he's plus one hundred. I think Drew, that that age thirty five number scares the shit out of me. Um he's taken a, an astronomical amount of damage in his career. If you want the real, he has the better skills. I think he's the better wrestler here, but he doesn't really go to it as much as I like him to. He will slug it out. Um, John Silva, a little fresher, less damage, younger, presses forward, very good boxing, very heavy handed. This fight is violence. I think someone's going to get finished in this fight no matter what, but I don't like John Silva moving up a weight class, but he did miss weight his last fight. He is big for the 45 weight class. I don't think this 55 weight class is going to be um, too much of a significant difference for him or his endurance, or I think it's going to help him that he's not cutting the weight. Um, he's giving up an inch in reach and an inch in height, and he's wide too. So probably not as wide as Drew Dober, hey, yo. Hey. But but I <laughs> but I think John Silva does put his punches together very well, and Drew Dober probably will engage him in a in a in a shootout. Unfortunately for Drew Dober, but maybe unfortunate for John Silva as well. I think it's a dog or pass fight. This fight's a little scary to bet on. I like violence on this spot. We'll be, probably be looking to parlay that. But outside of that, um, give me give me John Silver for the dog shot as well. Next fight on the card at men's featherweight. We have C-Rod. Christian Rodriguez going one-on-one with Juicy J. Julian Erosa. Rodriguez, 11-1, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 26 years old. Erosa, 29-11, fighting out of what the hell is this? Yakami? Yakima. I, I didn't know that was a place in the United States. Yakima, Washington. <laughs> 34 years old. This is a this is an intriguing fight. Um big step up for C Rod. I mean, he's he's got the uh the unofficial nickname of uh Prospect Killer because he's destroyed three of them in a row. Used to fight at Bantamweight. Now he's fighting at Featherweight. It's because, you know, he's had some troubles in the past making the weight. The last time he fought somebody with this much experience or more, it was uh, JSP, Jonathan Pierce. I think that's his nickname, JSP, right? Or JPS. No, it's JSP. I think. JSP. I think, I think C-Rod probably gets this one done here. I'm going to lean C-Rod as the pick. Reason being, I think he's probably got... I mean, not probably. He's 100% got the better chin. Erosa, say what you want. Like, he's got super good grappling. I think his, like, front headlock series shit is, like, legit. But my man has got a dustpan chin. I think he's got seven KO losses. I think all of them have come in the UFC. He's literally kill or be killed lately. C-Rod, I know known for his grappling, but I know in the regional scene... Uh, he can, he can wear you down. He's got a little bit of, you know, lead in the pipes. You know what I'm saying? Give me C-Rod here. I think when it comes to the grappling, I think it kind of negates itself. I don't, I don't think C-Rod's going to get submitted by Erosa. And if this is in the standup, Erosa will more experience, but C-Rod, I mean, for his age, super composed. I just, I like everything about this kid's game. I think he gets it done here. Maybe decision. Maybe. If he doesn't knock him out, it's probably going to go decision, but what about you? Yeah, you're a lot more confident about C-Rod than I am in this fight. Um, he's given up four inches in height, three and a half inches in reach. Not really the biggest knockout puncher. Dude hasn't knocked anyone out since 
in three years. Yeah. Julian Goodfriend front hadn't locked series, as you said. Very good grappler, very big for the weight class. And he's a plus 180 dog. I mean, I don't know. And C-Rod does sometimes find himself in places where he shouldn't be with the grappling. Raul Rosa's got his back. Like, easy. You know, in the wrong. first round. So this might be another dog another dog <laughs> pass. You know, dog or pass shot. So I, I just don't like this line for C-Rod. I like betting him at plus money because he doesn't really do anything great. He just does everything really good. I think Juicy J does have the X factor to finish this fight, though. Um, and I do think he, with the size, the length, and the experience, as you've seen with JSP, able to bury him with the wrestling, get him to the floor and control him, I think C-Rod might have a little bit of an issue with this guy's size. Give me Julian. Give me C-Rod. Give me Julian as the, as the pick, the lean, and a possible bet. Next fight on the card at middleweight, we have Cody Brundage going one-on-one -on -one with Judo Thunder. Abdul Radzak. Al-Hassan. Or Al-Hassan. I mean, no disrespect. Brundage. Horrible. <laughs> 10 and 6 overall fighting out of Inglewood, Colorado. He's from, he's from Colorado. 30 years old. Going one-on-one -on -one with Judo Thunder Al-Hassan. Razak. I like his middle name. His real name is hard. Mm -hmm. Razak. E. Uh, fighting out of Arlington, Texas, but repping Ghana, 38 years old. I think I said 10 and 12 and 6 overall, right? I think I'm you did. 12 and 6 overall. This is another interesting fight, and I think you're not going to like the way I'm going to lean this fight because I think, listen, I don't, I don't like Cody. <laughs> I think he's ass. I think Cody can get this win. You I, I think, listen, let's hear me out. Um, I like Razak. He's judo thunder. Doesn't really go to his judo. This fight, if Razak had the option, it's probably going to stay standing. That being said, also, and Razak hits like a fucking, like a truck. <laughs> like he's he's built like a Ford. Tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's this, Ford tough, 100%. That being said, this is the best grappler, or best wrestler, I think, Al Razak has fought. I you mean El Razak. Razak. I'm, I don't want to disrespect the guy. I'm fucking his Judo Thunderman. Right? Judo Thunderman. <laughs> this is the best wrestler he's fought by far. If Cody can just fucking do his thing and wrestle this guy, he can get the takedowns here. Not with the, the, the greatest amount of confidence. I'm going to pick Cody to win this fight. I think he can get it done, bro. I, <laughs> and he's a dog. I kind of like this spot for Cody. If he doesn't get slept... <laughs> What about you? <laughs> I think that I think it's an there's an obvious way to play Cody Brundage fights at this point. Um, I think you play him round one, and if he doesn't win in round one, I think he's gonna get fucked up. Like that's that's where I'm at. This guy, I'll, um, uh, I'm not gonna pronounce his name either. Razak, Ju Judo, Judo Thunder, Judo Thunder, Al Hassan, Judo Thunder, Abdul, <laughs> Abdul has is a big dude. Not for the weight class, but he's stout. Um, I have a hard time believing Cody Brundage is going to be able to take him down for three rounds. The judo might come into play this fight because of the attempted takedowns he's going to have. Cody can crack two, so Cody can probably catch him in round one. But Cody has just not shown the propensity or the consistency to convince me to put my money on this guy as a money line. I think I play him round one or under round and a half, and that's it. And, th and then you play round two and three for uh, um, judo thunder. I think that's where I'm at with this fight. I don't know how I'm going to play it, but my lean is obviously Al Hassan um, for, because I think Cody Brundage is just straight ass. Next fight on the card at welterweight, we have, I don't know how to say his name in the Brazilian, but, uh, but Gabriel Bonfim going one-on-one -on -one with the last ninja, Ange Lusa. <laughs> Bonfim, 15-1, and one, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 26 years old. Lusa. 10 and 3, fighting out of Switzerland, repping Switzerland, 30 years old. Excellent fight, I think. Uh, this one, the more I thought about it and the more I dug into it in terms of footage, the more I'm kind of just like back and forth on it because I do think, and you know, my brother's probably going to agree, I think Angelusa is probably more of a live dog <laughs> than people want to give him credit for here. As a pick, I'm going to lean Bonefim. I'm going to lean Bonefim because... I think the finishing upside is there. I think Ange Lusa, as much as I, I like him, I, I love his volume. I love his forward pressure. I, I I like his durability, but when he gets into these grappling exchanges sometimes, he kind of kind of kind of gets into a bit of trouble. And I think with Bonfim at the end of the day, 
He's not one of those guys you want to accidentally put your head into, you know, a into a guillotine or leave your arm, you know, hanging out there for a little bit longer than you usually would. He's not one of those guys that's going to fuck around. He's He'll grab it. He's an explosive fighter. I think Bonefim should get it done. That being said, Ange Lusa, tough. He can't push a pace. I know he really don't have a, a good rap right now because of his last fight against Battle. I, listen, I, the eye poke was legitimate. It was definitely legit. And I think he was just responding to Battle, like, you know, calling him a bitch, essentially. Correct. And he's like, well, listen, I ain't no bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, this was life or death. I, we fight right now. I think that's what it kind of was. I mean, it's still not a good look. He I mean, it's me. only a bad look because Battle bitched. Yeah. Like, battle, you know, battle, I, I don't want to sound like horrible. And, and I like Battle. Yeah, and he's I, gotten and, way better, too. And I think Battle was on his way to winning that fight. Correct. Regardless, in my opinion. But yeah, Angelusa, I mean... He he might get a little scary in the third round because he pushes such a pace. These these two are like built like brick shit houses. Correct. So if you're into that, cue to George Michaels because it's, it's sexy time in there. Looking <laughs> at these Adonises, but yeah, give me Bone Theme here. If in terms of how to bet this, I'm I'm too I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I'm, I, maybe if I see some props that intrigue me, I might I might take a stab here and there. But pure pick. Bonfim probably wins this fight. Yeah, Bonfim coming off that loss of Nicholas Dalby, which we called here on the Access to Combat podcast. Tune into that episode if you think we're capping. Um, <laughs> we are capping. Yeah. But we're not capping. We're not you know capping. What I'm saying? No yeah. cap. <laughs> that was easy money. He was a plus 410. Angelusa is a plus 310. A guy who pushes a pace against a guy who in Bonfim who does not have a good gas tank. Kind of empties his load. His striking is not that good. He's very powerful, but... Not very a very good technical striker. His jiu-jitsu is filthy, but if he can't get Angelou out with the jiu-jitsu in the first round, round and a half, he's in trouble. So I think you play Ange rounds two and three in this fight. And if you want to bet Bonfim, you bet Bonfim. But I'm definitely going to play value for um, Angelou to rounds two and three in this fight. Even though he's not the best finisher, Bonfim's going to be so tired. He's the defense is going to go out the window, and Ange is going to be able to just put it on him. Also, I think Bonefim is the biggest favorite on his card currently, and I think that's crazy. I, I don't think that's I yeah. don't think that's right. The leans Bonefim because I think Bonefim is going to come out like his other brother did in his last fight against um, the older gentleman um, uh, from Hell Pachel. Um, I forgot, they're I forgot both, about that fight. Yeah, they're both coming off for losses, and that Bonefim was able to make good adjustments to his game and really push. You know. He didn't finish him the way I thought he was going to finish him, but he he did fight a good fight. Yeah. This bone frame, I think, is going to come out the same way. But the thing is that the difference between Pachel and Ange, Ange is going to come forward the whole fight um, and really make him work with the wrestling, with everything. So I think bone frame early, Ange late. That's how I would play this. Um, bone frame the lean, but there's definitely value on the dog shot for Ange. <laughs> Co-main event. Men's welterweight, we have Santiago Pontanibio, the Argentine dagger, going one-on-one -on -one with the king of Kung Fu, Muslim Salikov. Mm. Damn. Gangsta-ass nicknames. Good-ass fight. Great matchmaking, in my opinion, here. Pontanibio, repping Argentina, hailing from Argentina, 37 years old. Salikov, repping Russia. Hailing from Russia, 19 and 5 overall, 40 years old. So we got two older gentlemen. Old ass motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out, hey, do I just shit or do I get off the pot? Give me Santiago here. Uh, I just think his experience overall, I, I, I trust his chin a little more. I agree. I trust his IQ a bit more. And I think Pons could probably get it done late, second, third round. I agree. Not ruling out Salikov because I think Salikov, his best chance, knockout early, super early. Because I think he is, at least when the fight starts, is going to be the quicker guy. I agree. 100%. Don't let his demeanor fool you. This motherfucker is quick. Yeah. Don't like, let his age miss you either. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, he's weird. He throws his... I mean, the, the problem with him is that since he throws everything into his, like his leg kicks and his striking, he tires quick. Yep. Santiago... Knows how to fight from the outside. Can really pick you apart. Very got, good technical striker. Got the better, better footwork overall. Got the better cardio. Give me Santiago to 
do one do one time for the one time for the Argentinians out here. And uh it sucks because I like Salikov. I like his style. Yeah, he's filthy. And I think he could rinse a lot of motherfuckers in this uh in this division in particular, but uh, Ponzinibbio, what about you? Yeah, I'm with you. And um, San- Santiago, I think, is also going to be the bigger guy, too. There's, there's a lot of things going for Santiago in this fight. Slightly younger. Yeah, I, I just think um, this is a tough fight for Muslim. Because this is a guy who's not going to engage or make too many mistakes. So, yeah, I'm with you all the way. I don't have much else to add. Santiago, for sure, I think, is the lean here. Good defensive wrestling, too, by the way. Main event at Women's Flyweight, we have Thug Rose Namanyunas. Going one on one with not Macy Barber, but last minute addition, Tracy Cortez. Naman Yunus, 12 and 6 overall, fighting out of Arvada, Colorado. I want to make sure I pronounce that correctly. 32 years old. Going against Tracy Cortez here, who was 11 and 1 overall, fighting out of Scottsdale, Arizona, 30 years old. Five rounder. Tracy was already, con- she was already training for a fight that was supposed to happen the week after. So, you know, one week, she's all, she, she, I think she's going to be all right. Uh, she wasn't really training for a five-rounder. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one demerit. Second demerit, I don't think, I don't think she's going to win this fight. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's not really a fucking demerit. That's just that's actually just a statement or opinion, right? But <sighs> I think this is just a huge step up for her. Correct. Rose, clearly. If we go on by resume by resume, she shits all over Tracy here. If Cortez, I think Cortez's only path to victory here is literally hug. It's to hug, snuggle, get her, her down. Do not let Rose strike her at all. I don't see it happening. Rose is the by a mile the better striker. She's not going to stay in front of her. Cortez, even though her boxing has improved, not that good defensively. She will lean on her chin. I don't think you want to do that against a, a girl like Naman Yunus, if I'm being particularly honest. And even if this fight does get to the ground, I think Naman Yunus is, I mean, she's fought, I guess, better grapplers or better wrestlers. She can get up. She can threaten submission. She's good. I'm going to lean decision. Rose by decision. I think it's, it's, it's going to be, a, it's going to look a little one-sided. I think in my opinion, if this fight plays out the way I think it's going to play out, it's going to look a little one-sided. Give me Rose by decision. I'm hoping to see Tracy maybe surprise me here, but from what I've seen, it, like, it's just a big step up for her in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think Rose ducked a real bullet fighting Macy, Tracy as opposed to Macy. Um, I, was gonna fade, I was going to fade. I was going <laughs> to. I was going to fade Rose hard against Macy. I think Macy is a very tough fight for her because Macy has very good MMA striking, knows how to bully. She's going to be way bigger than Rose. She'll be way more physical too. Way more physical. I, I'm not sure Tracy is going to be able to bully Rose because Ro- Tracy doesn't have the physicality of a Zhang Weili. I, I, and Tr- Zhang Weili couldn't hold Rose on the floor. Was able to dig the underhook, get to the opposite side, underhook, get up multiple times during their fights. Um, the only girl that's really been able to control Rose on the floor is Carla Esparza, and not really the second fight, because that second fight was just fucking boring and bad. This is a lot to ask for from Tracy Cortez. I tell you what, though. One thing I will give the girl, very high fight IQ. She does make good decisions. I thought she lost to Melissa Gatto, to be frank. I thought that I thought she lost that fight. I think the judges kind of just gave it to her to give it to her, to be frank. Even the Jazz Davisius fight, I thought she had a good game plan, but Jazz was able to walk through her punches and give her a lot of trouble. I know Jazz is big, but Jazz not the most technical and not good at, not really good at cutting off the ring. So you're telling me Tracy, who only has one knockout and what, I think one submission in her UFC resume, or rather resume in general, is going to be able to hurt or get the respect of Rose Nam and Eunice in this fight while trying to mix in the wrestling, which Rose has very good defensive wrestling. And... If you're asking me, I think Rose has the better jiu-jitsu. She has way more opportunity jiu-jitsu, and she knows how to get up from her feet even after putting herself in bad positions. I think it's a lot to ask for from uh, Tracy Cortez. I really do. Um, Give me Rose by decision, but we'll see how this fight shakes out later in the week. Rose did not look good against Amanda Hibas. Amanda showed me a lot in that fight. Amanda was able to get her down, but once again, not able to hold her down for periods of time. And I think Amanda has the better striking anyway, as opposed to Tracy. 
doesn't make the best decisions. If she made better decisions, she might have been able to win that fight. That's why I'm kind of like, you know, I'm not as confident as my brother on Rose, but I understand why he is as comfortable on Rose. Because if Tracy can implement the game plan similar to Amanda, where she can, but she can offensively wrestle a little better than her and win positions. This could be real interesting, but if you're asking me, it's just very difficult for me to fade Rose against Tracy Cortez. And I mean, not, I mean, not to to shit all over. I mean, let me let me give Tracy some flowers here, and not to be uh, super contrarian to your earlier points, but I think in the Gatto fight, I think she won that fight. It was a close fight. It's very close. But Tracy showed me a couple things in there. That one, she's not afraid to uh, engage in the grappling, engage in the engage in any kind of grappling or wrestling against any kind of jujitsu player. Two, in the Jazz Davisius fight. I, first of all, probably not a good look from Jazz Vicious that she got outstruck and kind of beat up on the feet by Tracy, who I, I think striking is a little eh. eh. That being said, Jazz Vicious walks forward. She's a, she's a bit of a punching bag. Rose is not. Correct. Rose will not stand in front of her. Rose will use all her lateral movement. Definitely a little more, not a little more, definitely the more dynamic striker compared to Jazz. I, I don't know. I just It's just hard for me. Unless Tracy has made significant leaps in her game, not even significant. At least it's got to be that, a, a yeah, decent it, leap a in de- her game. I agree, and she I, is. I, she, I, I just don't see a way she wins this fight more times than I. I, I just think Rose, she, I, she should be happy that she's getting Tracy instead of Macy. Yeah, you're, you're 100 right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I'm just saying that like the Amanda Hebas fight showed me a lot. And I don't know if Rose particularly belongs in this weight class. And um, she might be punching up, but this is another fight where Tracy. It's winnable. It's definitely winnable for, for 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 Rose. She has more ways to win this fight, which is why she's the rightful favorite. Tracy should be fighting a weight class down. If I'm being completely yeah. honest, I know she's fought at bantamweight before, and she kind of she settled in here at lightweight. But I feel like she's even for I mean not for lightweight for flyweight, but for flyweight I still think she's kind of small. Amanda also fought at strawweight. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. and she was able to get Rose down on head and arm throws. True. You know, this is what I'm saying. So the grappling is, is viable. I it, mean, and listen, who knows? Maybe Tracy just turns into the fucking D1 Tracy and just like and just surprises the shit out of me. You know correct. What I'm that That's where I'm at with this. Yeah. Um, this fight, I don't think is as clear cut as people are, are peop, as people are making it. But Rose is the rightful favorite. Um, I think this is a tougher fight for Tracy than it is for Rose. I think Rose has to adjust a little. I think Tracy has to adjust a lot. And I think Rose is going to give her a lot to think about in there. Like a lot. With the striking, the jab, the overhand. right. And, and don't get me wrong. The one thing Tracy does have going for her, she is durable. Like she can take a good shot. Amanda, not durable. Not too durable. Was able to stay all five rounds with Rose. So this is what I'm saying. This fight, I don't think it's as clear cookie cutter. But I do think Rose is going to win. I'm with you. I think Rose wins more times than not. But if this line gets out of control, don't be surprised if I just make a shot on Tracy via decision. I, I do think Tracy can exploit some of the wrestling holes with, uh, with, with, with Rose. The problem is I don't know if she's going to be... The reason why I'm picking Rose is because I don't know if Tracy's going to be able to hold her down for stretches at a yeah, time. I think she might lack the physicality. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with so. you. So give me Rose, but I don't know how I'm going to play this. Probably Rose by decision, but I don't know how I'm going to play this outside of that. So, And that's it for UFC Denver. We do have some boxing. We will briefly mention it here. And to be quite honest, I mean, just follow us on social media if you want any of the uh, updates for boxing in particular here. We do. I know Boots is fighting Jaron Ennis. I don't know who the hell he's fighting. David uh, something. I can't pronounce his last name. Also, another fight. Janabek is fighting. I can't pronounce his opponent's name at all either. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not to not to be an asshole. But. No, it's okay. Yeah, we have we honestly haven't sat down and done the research for this no. because it, we this is very early in the week. Um, but this is something you can definitely follow us on our social media platforms for to obtain um, some bets, uh, possible bets that we may or may not make on this. Jerron Ennis defending his IBF World Welterweight Title at home in Philly. Matchroom made. Um, this is a layup fight. I don't want to say it's a layup fight, but it's 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 a showcase fight from Eddie Hearn. Um, now, in terms of the actual fight, is it going to be a showcase? No, I don't think David uh, Avencian, So I think that's how you pronounce it. I said it with a little bit of a Spanish accent, even though I think he's a brother. This fight is not going to necessarily be 
a walk in the park. But I do think it's one that Jerron should win. Um, Janibek, the world middleweight title, that's he's at the 160 weight class, right below Canelo's 168-pound weight class, if I'm correct, the 163, rather. He's the champion right now. Got to do a little bit more research on um, Janibek before I um, give you an, an opinion on this, So, um, as well as the opponent. So that's where we're at with it. We'll see where it goes. Follow us on all social media platforms. We'll help you guys out with that. Um, but with that said, I think that, that that about wraps it up. That wraps it up, my brother. Take it away. Like, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, you already know. That's a wrap. Episode 61 in the books. Love you guys. Welcome back. Hope we get. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the, the content. You guys already know the deal. Everything's free 99, free content. We're giving you free picks. We're pretty good on this podcast. We're making picks. Love you guys. Show us some love. Holla at ya. See you next time.